Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you guys hear me speaking? Uh, yes. Hi, Dean from the Singapore Young Entrepreneurs Award team. So today we are glad to have all of you here today to join us for this session on live streaming. So today we have two very uh, honorable guests together with us here. So first off, we have Mr. Ken Lau representing OSG Youth Alliance, which is one of our key ecosystem partner. He will be moderating today's session. And we also have Mr. Colin Poir, which is our key guest speaker for today. He will be sharing with you all his tips about commerce live streaming from China to Singapore. So before we proceed further, um, just a very quick announcement to all of our attendees today. Um, later on, throughout the session, we will actually be putting up a very quick poll question. So this question is a very straightforward question. It's just to ask, how's your day today? Are you excited or uh, to learn more? Or are you excited to connect? So just respond. And um, by the end of the session, we will actually have a lucky draw. So this lucky draw is a, 10, a $15 grab voucher. So uh, towards the end of the session, we will actually conduct this lucky draw. So without further ado, I will pass the session over to Mr. Kent and also Mr. Colin Tuan. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Christine. Um, thank first you. of all, yeah, thank you. Uh, welcome to our OSG session. Uh, first of all, a short introduction of uh, OSG Youth Alliance. We are established in Singapore in 2017, a social enterprise, and we nurture a network of global-minded and enterprising youths who believe in leading and creating a positive impact. And today we are a growing platform of young people that are connected across geographical and cultural backgrounds. Our presence uh, today are in Singapore, Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, and Hangzhou. Our vision is empowering today's youth for tomorrow's world. And our mission is to build a generation of global-minded and enterprising youths with eyes set on China and the world, a heart to bridge borders and cultures, and a spirit to create a positive impact in our communities. Um, OSG today is uh, led by a youth leadership team and is backed by a senior, senior leadership team and we're all volunteers. And this year we're excited to bring forward a, 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 a suite of uh, signature programs, notably Sustainable Sustainability started on and Bonding Beyond Borders. And this is as part of the World uh, Economic Forum uh, in Singapore. And uh, apart from that, we have a regular program such as the virtual leadership program, mentor mentee program, and our Curious Potato live discussion series that's in uh, our episode two that's going to happen this afternoon at two o'clock. Okay, um, so without further ado, may I present Mr. Colin Poir, founder and CEO of Captive Media and Captive Interactive, who's presenting to us today commerce live streaming from China to Singapore how to make it work for your brand. Colin, over to you. Right, um, thanks Ken, I'll quickly share my screen now. Um, right, um, what I'll do is that I'll, I'll jump straight in. So today's uh, you know, content will include the, you know, this, you know, so quickly I'll run through a brief intro to Captive China and Singapore. Just give everybody a background on you know, who we are, what we do, um, and also the background that we have. Uh, in live streaming. So we will be looking briefly at the live streaming scene in Singapore and China and also what are the key elements of live streaming um, and also for those that consider to embark on live streaming, what do you need to look out for? And finally, we have a Q&A session where I welcome any uh, questions we have. Now, uh, time is tight, so uh, you know, it's a lot to go through, so I'll maybe you know, speak a bit faster. Uh, but any questions we have, feel free to you know, drop it into the chat box. So very quickly, um, you know, I founded the company in 2002. So this is our 19 year of operation. Um, amongst many things, you know, one of the fastest growing part of our business in China actually is live streaming. So we've been actually involved in um, live streaming in China for you know, the past two over years now, right? Uh, we are very plugged into the whole uh, e-commerce ecosystem uh, in China. So from your Tmall to your Taobao Live, um, et cetera. Uh, we also accredited Taobao Live vendor. But at the same time, we also do stuff for live streaming on WeChat, on TikTok, Douyin, uh, Tencent, JD, etc. Um, as a Singapore, you know, self-based uh, Singapore background agency in China, 
uh, we've been you know winning major awards for live streaming, and we're actually recognized in China as setting benchmark uh, content development quality uh, that a lot of you know players are following now in China. Uh, so these are some of the clients that uh, we do live stream for. So just to give you an idea where we come from in terms of experience and the sharing we have today. Just drawing from the experience we have working from multiple brands, uh, from international brands, you know, like Adidas, Swarovski, um, you know, your Gaps, uh, all the way to local brands who have done live streaming in China, um, from your Beijing Yang to your Bobo Fishball, you know, Green Life, um, etc. So we've also been managing live streaming hubs in. In Shanghai, we have two hubs in Shanghai. Um, so these are you know, live streaming hubs that we use for our own you know, uh, live streaming programs. Uh, we also enter into a you know, joint venture in Chengdu for you know, more live streaming space. So I'll quickly share a video here of, uh, that gives you a snapshot of what live streaming is like you know, according to our experience uh, in China. Uh, I'm gonna and I understand you know this is my first time to hop in. So you will hear maybe just some very faint music. There's no audio, there's no, uh, you know, voice in this video. So I will talk you know, as the video is playing. Uh, Ken, if there's any issue, please, uh, you know, just flag it out to me. Sure. Right, so we came out with this concept called, um, you know, Cloud Shop, right? And this is what most people are doing on Taobao, all right, on Facebook. Sorry, on Facebook, on Shopee, on Lazada, etc. So fairly basic kind of live streaming, single camera. Um, so we first introduced the concept, concept of live shop, uh, cloud shop, um, introducing you know retail elements, uh, product close-ups. Um, we do a lot of uh, interactions, demos uh, online to really spice up the user engagement. Uh, these hosts are they're not influencers, they're not celebrities. We actually audition, cast, and train them. To be live streamers, uh, both in terms of selling product knowledge and brand knowledge, we are what we call professional generated content (PGC). Um, so, from scripting, uh, inventory control, set design, strategy, um, we do end to end uh, for all our projects. Um, so, it's not just in the studio; we also do projects uh, in the you know stores of our clients. But whether it's you know in a studio or in a store, the main focus is not really the production part. The main focus is really on the strategy, the methodology, uh, the content development, uh, user engagement, and how do we drive more conversions um, and sales for the brands? Uh, because we are doing what we call e-commerce live streaming or commerce live streaming. Uh, I want to just show you another example of a project we did last year. Um, and this is actually a project that was, uh, you know, born because of the COVID situation in China. So uh, Enterprise Singapore was uh, speaking to us about. Um, the concern about how to help Singapore brands in, in China, um, you know, because back in February, March last year, you know, China was, uh, you know, realizing the, the peak of this crisis um, due to COVID. So we came up with this content platform called Shop SG Live at China, really, um, you know, to help Singapore brands who are already selling on the e-commerce platform in China, right, um, to do more promotion and drive more sales during the very difficult period. So this was a uh, three campaign project uh, over uh, Liu Yao Ba, 18th of June period, the uh, TC Chinese Valentine's Day period, and also the very big double 11 um, festival. So each time, you know, we had um, three days of live stream for each campaign, and each time was four hours per evening of each of these days. So we really helped all these different brands curate their products, plan a strategy, um, you know, we did a pre-marketing to drive the eyeballs, to drive the traffic to the live streaming. Uh, we worked with um, also on-platform and also off-platform, you know, channels. And we helped the brands really curate, um, you know, pull out their content. How do we bring on experts to talk about the product, highlight the USPs, um, and ultimately to drive traffic and conversion on their Tmall stores. So this was a, a one-off campaign specifically targeted to help Singapore brands who are maybe new to live streaming, um, you know, to really get on the platform and experience it themselves um, firsthand in China. So three campaigns last year, uh, so the last one was completed in November. So that was our China background. Um, and you know, coming to Singapore, so we actually you know, started our Singapore office in, um, you know, uh, only early last year in March, really because also I was stuck in, in um, Singapore because of the COVID situation. So what we're going to do is really to bring live commerce uh, to Singapore, right? 
And we're very fortunate to be right at the forefront of uh, light train development in Singapore. Uh, you know, in the span of six months last year, we, we handled eight major first ever projects um, involving over 125 brands and retailers. So this next video uh, gives you a sort of overview of some of the projects we handled in Singapore. It was a very exciting time because live streaming, as we all know, is extremely new in Singapore. So we started with the first ever shopping mall live streaming project uh, by Suntech. This was in June last year. So never before it was done at the scale. Four evenings, each evening was four hours, uh, involving a lot of retailers. And we built um, temporary sets in empty units at Suntech. Then this was followed closely by Capital Lands uh, project, where uh, you know we brought all the influencers and celebrities on a three evening you know, uh, project, two hours each. We also worked very closely with Mediacorp, um, and this is one of our clients' phrases. So really going in and helping each of the merchants and the brands with the content. The Great Singapore sale was actually cancelled. Um, we entered a discussion with the Singapore Retailer Association, and hence was born uh, EGSS. So we handled uh, all the live streaming projects, including for uh, staycations and hotels. So as you can see, you know, we were really you know, bringing experience you know, from uh, China and adapting it and you know, tweaking it to fit the local context in Singapore. Uh, besides sales, we also use live streaming to launch concept store for BreadTalk uh, at their new Wheelock Place outlet. Um, we were helping uh, Lazard, Lazada and Redmart on several of their anniversary projects. And we also actually launched Giant, a new rebranding on live streaming. So a lot of um, you know, exciting new applications to live streaming uh, in Singapore. Uh, Mooncake Festival had to be cancelled, atrium events because of COVID, and we brought it live. And uh, as we are now building our pool of talents in Singapore, we're also running talent shows to spot new talent and fresh talent that we can then you know, work with on our various programs in Singapore. So that's a snapshot of what we're doing in Singapore. Um, we also started working with Shopee. Uh, Shopee approached us to be the first ever live streaming store on Shopee. So we now have our own store called Shop SG Official. And we really created you know, um, low barrier entry type um, programs and platforms for SME merchants to jump on board, um, you know, to actually promote their products and then be able to buy these products on the live streaming, so on the uh, Shopee store, so that they explain, uh, they ex experience the full e-commerce uh, live e-commerce experience, which is extremely important for live streaming to work. So we're trying to make it engaging, make it fun, um, make it interesting, because ultimately it's about user engagement, about viewer engagement. So really working with each of these merchants on the uh, product USPs. Um, so up to now, we've done about 10 streams. So literally, literally one stream per week. Um, and then, you know, hoping to grow this uh, in Singapore with, together with the SME merchants. Uh, we were also fortunate to win some awards on, in Singapore last year with the work that we've done. Um, right, so that was a very quick run through of um, where we're coming from, um, you know, and it was exciting for us coming to Singapore. And also, um, China live streaming continues to grow at a rapid pace. So I'll start now by just taking you know, everyone through a very brief look at China's live streaming scene. Yeah. So some key stats, uh, some of you may be familiar with this. Um, I, I think suffice to say, China is a massive, massive market when it comes to e-commerce and it continues to grow. Um, and a lot of it is mobile based. And actually live streaming um, has seen you know, phenomenal growth only actually in the past two years or so. Um, and we see actually that it's becoming more and more of a mainstream part of the e-commerce ecosystem, right? So phenomenal growth, both in terms of the market size, right, 16.3 billion US dollars in terms of live stream, live streaming e-commerce market size, and also increasing in terms of live streaming users. Now, I just want to highlight to you, live streaming is a very generic term. You can have social live streaming, gaming live streaming. Um, we focus on what we call e-commerce live streaming. Okay. Now, uh, if I just take everyone through a, a quick, you know, um, sort of a run through the history we made of live streaming in China. Um, so back in 2014, 2015, uh, live streaming was really, you know, uh, big and it started really in the esports, the gaming arena, right? So those gamers out there, you might be familiar with this. And then, you know, around about 2016, 2017, there was the start of a rapid growth of live streaming. It became more mainstream, uh, entertainment, food, education, and e-commerce started to become, you know, a key driver. And back then, 
Uh, there were over 500 live streaming apps available in 2016. Right? Uh, coming closer, you know, 2018, 2019, um, it went from more user-generated content, uh, which is where, you know, we're talking about individuals, be it uh, just an ordinary person or a, a KOL or influencer doing it themselves, to more professional-generated content, which is where um, people like uh, companies like us came in to really help, you know, planning, uh, content development, and you know, live streaming. So we went from more KOL-driven direct sales to more brand-driven content marketing and sales approach. Now, for those of you who are looking to, you know, considering you know using live streaming, this is something to really bear in mind because in Singapore, I think we're still at the, uh, the more UGC stage. Um, but increasingly, you know, our clients here are also looking at how to make it more uh, PGC to entice and attract more viewers with the quality content, and also how to be more effective in driving conversion and sales. So. 2020 and beyond, uh, I think we're seeing everywhere around the world very multi-faceted content marketing um, and using live streaming as a medium for content marketing. So it's not just about driving sales, it's also about branding, it's about new product launches, it's about acquiring new consumers, and more importantly, engaging with existing customers. Uh, and the keyword of shopper payment is something we hear a lot. So, you know, for China, you know, the market is huge, it's growing, you know, so just e-commerce live streaming users, uh, and this is in 2019, we're looking at 265 million. And for 2020, actually, um, that has gone as high as 500 million. Obviously, there are different stats we're getting, but just, you know, give you an overview, that's, uh, you know, looking at almost 29 to 30% of the total online user um, size. So I'll just take you through some of the key uh, platforms, uh, speaking, you know, on the uh, China. So we have Taobao Live, all right. Um, oh, bear with me a second, yeah. So you know, might set an auto and you know, send me. So there's Taobao Live, which is right now the biggest uh, live streaming platform in China, uh, in the world actually. There's a uh, WeChat Live also, and obviously based on the WeChat program. There's Kuai so, all right. And there's also TikTok, right, right. So what we'll see here is that I'll just share with you some of the kaleidoscope of content and formats right, uh, that we have uh, in China right now. Um, so a lot of these, right, you know, are, I guess very peculiar and, and you know, interesting to non-Chinese consumers, right? So they could be fast talking, you know, very hardcore selling, all right? Uh, so that's very common in China, all right? And then you also have a lot of uh, what we call interactions, you know, uh, getting experts online, to talk to um, you know and share with the host and the audience about you know, product attributes and a lot of gamification right you know little games so anything to really make it fun and interesting exciting uh, for uh, consumers watching right and then you also notice you know um, you know more luxury or more high end brands like Dior uh, getting involved in live streaming too um, now so this is Dior's lipstick you know sales now if you look actually you can see the Big difference in quality, you know, from the the you know the, the cameras and the quality of the visuals and the images, right? But a lot of it is very free flowing. Uh, it looks very unscripted, and uh, you know, so a lot of audience like this so-called live and real time kind of feel. Yeah. So these are some examples of what's happening in China. Um, so more examples, brands like Gap uh, going into PGC, right? So really, it's starting to improve on the quality of content because the viewers are starting to demand better quality. And with better quality comes better engagement. So this is Gap, you know, um, working with different uh, influencers and even bringing, you know, the kids on, on stage, right? Uh, I wanted to share this project we did for Adidas, um, you know, last year, smack in the COVID period um, when, Things were really bad. A lot of projects had to be cancelled. So the Super Brand Day was the biggest day for any brand working with Tmall, uh, and all the below the line events had to be cancelled. We actually said, "Hey, you know, let's not waste this content." So we took that content, we repackaged it, uh, and created a live stream week. So very curated programs, right? Um, you know, every day, you know, throughout the week, and within nine minutes of commencement of live streaming sales, um, GMB that's gross merchandising value. Um, exceeded 100 million RMB. That's about 20 million Sing dollars. So, you know, live streaming in China now is not just a trend, it's not just a fad, uh, it's not just about 
hype of dealership is actually also really about you know real conversion and sales. So just to show you how things are developing, like for our client post system, uh, which is uh, the largest winter wear, uh, goose down feather winter wear uh, brand in China, you know, all kinds of fashion show, uh, interesting engagement, right? Um, working with celebrities. So these are the kind of things we have to do to actually engage and hold the audience, right? Uh, because nobody really watches live streaming from start to finish, right? Um, but as you make it more entertaining, more fun, more engaging, then the longer you tend to hold the audience, um, you know, and be able to sort of engage with them in a very meaningful manner. And ultimately, I think um, what we want to do you know, for the brands and the merchants is actually drive um, useful, meaningful conversions uh, and ultimately sales. Now, uh, our capital land in, in China, you know, also use TikTok. Uh, so we help them with it. And this was once again spent during the COVID period, um, you know, going through store to store. So as you can see, right, you know, there are all kinds of formats um, for live streaming. And there's really no right or wrong with it, right? Uh, it's really down to how the content is planned, uh, what are the objectives of, you know, you doing live streaming, right? Um, and how best to keep a long tail effect. So the key message here is really, you know, you got to continue to do it, engage it, no difference from how you are, you know, planning your Facebook uh, um, social media content or your IG you know, social media content, right? So as you can see, all levels of quality, you know, and engagements in terms of live streaming. Now, I'm sure you've heard of um, Wang Hong's, this term, or what we call really high uh, top line uh, you know, influencers and key opinion leaders in China, right? So these are some examples, right, of, of the kind of live streaming they would do. And they are not necessarily extremely high in quality when you look at it, uh, or staging, but they depended primarily on um, obviously they are huge who are followings, okay? Um, and, you know, a lot of them have, you know, loyal fans. They will literally follow all their programs. Now, this is a trend that is starting to change. So, for example, in our uh, hey car, you know, looking at each time she does a stream is over 200,000, and this is considered a smaller uh, viewership number. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of uh, Wei Ya, right? Uh, probably the leading, you know, Wang Hong influencer in China right now, right? And uh, this is her her sales of Vivo phone, right? And you can see like 16 million views, right? 11.7 million likes. So that's the kind of power of this so-called Wang Hong. Uh, but having said that, there are very few of them. There are probably, you know, uh, no more than 10 of this super level, we call it Tofu Wang Hong in China, right? And I think the trend increasingly over the past two years is going more towards brand-driven rather than KOL-driven. So for them, these guys now, they're actually becoming more and more of a media channel rather than a sales channel. And uh, finally, uh, Li Jiaqi, uh, Austin Lee, uh, better known as the lips Lipstick King. Obviously, he sells more than lipsticks, right? He really sells all kinds of products on his programs, right? And we're looking at, for example, this uh, 618 special, 22 million views, right? And 39 million likes uh, over a four hour duration. So just a snapshot of you know examples of the kaleidoscope of type of live streaming in uh, China. Okay. So just to wrap up the, the China bit. Um, so once again, the stats are quite a, quite phenomenal in terms of the number, both in terms of the sales. Right, we're looking at you know four hundred thirty three billion yuan, about eighty five million uh, billion Singapore dollars in terms of sales. Uh, that's the growth we can see, right? And also the viewership growing to possibly this year, 800 million uh, online e-commerce live stream viewers. Yeah. So I think uh, a, a lot of data out there that uh, I'm sure some of you have seen before. And I think one thing is clear that all this data points to the fact that um, more and more brands are getting onto the bandwagon because, not because of the trend, but because they actually see, you know, the actual uh, value of it. So just our clients alone in China, uh, one example is Adidas. Uh, from 2019, they were just testing it for the first time with us. Uh, just did a, a, a no more than you know, 30, 40 streams. Uh, in last year, they did about 140 streams in a year. That's 100, 140 days of live streaming. And this year, we'll be doing about 180 days of live streaming. So, you know, brands, and not just the big brands, but the smaller brands, same kind of trend and figures we're seeing. 
Um, so because of your sales results and conversion results uh, are obvious, more and more brands are investing long term into this particular medium. Um, the number of active live streamers in Taobao is also doubled, right? Um, and average daily live streams by individuals, right, which is the UGC part of it, has increased by more than 100% year on year. Yeah. So both brands, uh, merchants, you know, the uh, platforms, the entire ecosystem in China, it continues to show very strong growth. Right. Um, how are we doing with time? Okay. So moving on, right? Um, coming closer to home, all right? So for those looking at China, um, I think what you saw was, you know, the landscape, obviously very competitive, um, you know, for brands big and small, right? Um, a lot of, uh, you know, streams going on, everybody's fighting for eyeballs. So now that's looking at the Singapore scene, obviously much younger, really at the infancy stage. Uh, I think all of you uh, being Singaporeans here, you will see that there's been really an explosion of live streaming content that's been happening in Singapore, right? And then actually, right, bear in mind that e-commerce live streaming is actually an elevation of e-commerce. So, um, you know, because live streaming stats, you know, is really non-existent for the moment. So looking at the e-commerce stats, right, one thing is clear, I think all of us on the stream are e-commerce users, right? At some point or other, varying regularity, we're buying things on the e-commerce platform. So growth on the e-commerce part is clear, right? And a lot of it is actually mobile-based, right? So cargo on mobile commerce is growing 18%, right? And the average user spend in Singapore is 1,360 on e-commerce. And the key driver here, right, being convenience. Um, obviously, with the circuit breaker situation last year, um, really gave e-commerce and also live streaming right, a massive boost and acceleration. Um, now, a lot of people talked about how, oh, now that we are easing out of circuit breaker, uh, you know, things are recovering back to normal, um, you know, this will win. But I think um, everybody has seen the figures, uh, especially with Shopee's growth in Southeast Asia. I think e-commerce continues to grow at an accelerated pace. And with that comes the growth of live streaming. So just some figures, right? Um, so GMV, uh, you know, was uh, 35 billion US dollars and we're looking at about 100% year year growth, right? Uh, regionally on live streaming, Shopee live streams increased up to 70 times during the recent uh, streamers go to 1212 shopping festival, right? In terms of um, in-app gaming, 2.7 billion plays on in-app games and 450 million viewers on Sh Shopee live over three weeks. Now bear in mind, right, these are not even the biggest uh, um, sort of uh, live streaming activity, right? Because the biggest is really Facebook Live and IG because it's free for use and a lot of UGC content on there. Uh, Last Live, very similar, um, you know, over 11 million views on, you know, double 11 last year, right? 380% uh, year on year growth in GMV. So I think our own homegrown uh, e commerce platforms, marketplaces, um, seeing the same kind of uh, trends that we see in China, albeit we're at a much earlier stage. So in terms of product categories, um, you know, these are you know, some of the areas, uh, categories that Singaporeans are spending money on, right? And no surprises, 70% is food related, right? I'm sure a lot of you have seen the, the seafood, right? The, you know, the uh, you know, packaged food that's being sold on Facebook. Um, a lot of beauty, cosmetics, skincare products, right? Um, and also electronic gadgets, electronic you know, like utensils, etc. So there was a recent survey conducted by Marketing Asia uh, last year. So why do Singaporeans enjoy live streaming? Uh, so 75, uh, a big percentage of them, you know, wanted to receive up-to-date information from sellers, right? A lot of them wanted to feel connected to the world, only I guess because of circuit breaker. Um, and Live streaming can be interesting and exciting because it's live, right? And I think a lot of the younger uh, viewers and users like the fact that it is, you know, kind of unscripted. Um, it is sort of off the cuff. Uh, there's a reality feel to it, right? And most importantly, you can do real-time chats and feedback um, with the host and also sometimes, in, you know, between you know, the viewers themselves. 74% uh, of millennials find live streaming videos useful in comparing products. Yeah. 
So if you look at the live stream uh, landscape in Singapore, overall, um, these are the main platforms. And I have to say the largest one to date is still by far Facebook Live, uh, you know, combining in IG Live, right? Uh, because it's UGC. And I think since last year, you have seen how the early days of uh, S Hook to here, right? To, uh, you know, people selling fish, durians. So all kinds of UGC content out there. And I think that as a PGC player in Singapore, we really welcome this because it means that the ecosystem is growing. Now bear in mind, there will always be a trial and error stage. Um, China went through that. Um, people you know, here in Singapore keep saying that, oh, Colin, you can't compare the China situation because you know, uh, you know, it's so vibrant there. But I just want to remind everybody that China didn't get to this stage you know, in one day, right? It happened over a period of four to five years, right? And it started by a lot of people, the UGCs, generating the content. And a lot of the brands and merchants trying out, daring to make efforts to give it a shot and develop content. And a lot of trial and error. Uh, I, I'm sure we have we've seen, you know, Wang Lei sell durian, right? Um, you know, on, on Facebook Live, right? So I think I wanted to pick an example because uh, it showed that there was a novelty factor, right? So some of the streams drawing, you know, 60,000, 70,000 view, viewers, right? And a lot of these um, live streams by Wang Lei, uh, they actually had sales too. But we know for a fact right now that, you know, uh, it seems that the sales is waning and maybe to some extent the novelty factor is waning also. So um, I think he continues to be a, a, a regular streamer with obviously good earnings you know, and uh, good traction. But what we know from both China and Singapore is that ultimately, right, you know, if you want to look at long-term education with your uh, followers, your users, and even to attract new users, yes, you need the interest, you need the excitement, you need the fun, you need the shop attainment. But you also need curated content. You also have to be engaging with the user or the viewer in a meaningful manner because it is no different from building up your Facebook or IG pages, right? So I think this is a, a, a little, you know, sharing that I wanted to, to you know, bring up uh, when it comes to uh, live streaming in Singapore. Let's not always look at, oh, who's the KOL? Um, you know, do I have huge viewers, you know, followers? Um, because that could be very short term. Now, in all the world, of course, it's important in, a, in an instance to get a larger viewership base because we all want eyeballs. Me. Right. Then even, you know, we have a uh, government, you know, driven initiatives here too, you know, with the, the thick car market project. Uh, this is fairly early last year. Um, so now I think this was the forerunner of what we see now. A lot of people selling seafood, right? Uh, people selling, you know, vegetables, right? Meat, right? So I, I thought it was just great that, you know, there were all kinds of uh, experiments, you know, and trials being conducted. Uh, which is an important part of the journey that each merchant or each of you have to experience if you embark on this, right? There is no standard playbook. There is no, you know, uh, you know, SOP that you definitely have to follow, right? Uh, I will share some of what I think are best practices later in this in this uh, session. So of course, uh, Lazada, a lot of streams, right? On uh, Last Life, on Shopee, um, and a lot of them are also working with you know, the, uh, the DJs, all right, uh, media cop artists, right? Uh, I think you've all seen the huge ad campaigns. Oh, somehow the video is not loading. Uh, but I think you get an idea of what I'm trying to do, uh, what, what I'm trying to show you, okay? Um, and also you can see that there's different levels of quality, right? You know, some of the quality that you've seen in our streams with the PGC. Um, and you know, even the uh, DJs doing it at home, right? Uh, working with brands and their viewers, so even the radio uh, platform is now, you know, jumping on the live stream platform, right? Uh, we will have things like demos, right? So I think it is a very powerful medium and tool that can be applied in different manners, yeah? And on Shopee, you very often see merchants that, hey, low barriers to entry, they do it themselves in their living room, right? With their own, uh, um, you know, handphones, uh, mobile phones, and it can equally be successful with both of the big and small brands.
So it's not just about selling, it's also about information, it's also about seminars. So some of the work we've done for UOB, um, you know, really you know, on wealth management. So, you know, different spectrum altogether, very wide spectrum of live streaming content and engagements. Yeah. And uh, this was for the uh, Writers Festival, Singapore Writers Festival, uh, a project we did um, late last year, right? So bringing, you know, events to live streaming uh, to a wider audience. So of course, uh, we are, even, even today, is a good example of how we, you know, we're using technology, right? To amplify the what we call below the line work that we're doing at the events, right, and still getting a lot of engagements um, despite all the COVID restrictions. Okay, so we're coming to uh, you know more of the key considerations of live stream, but up to now, right, you know, we're looking we've looked at the China situation, we've looked at the Singapore situation. Uh, I've shared some of what other people are doing. Um, all of you are, I'm guessing, possible viewers yourselves and users of self live streamer, uh, live streaming. So you have seen what is out there. Okay. So what does it take for a brand to actually jump in and get involved? All right. Uh, we've got about 15, 20 minutes left, so I'll, I'll speed up a bit. But you know, I want to leave enough time for live uh, for Q and A later too. Uh, so with e-commerce, um, obviously one key use of live streaming, um, marketing and PR. So don't just see live streaming as a pure commerce uh, you know, platform, right? It can be very effectively used as marketing, as PR. Um, you can bring your events you know, online. You can bring your events online uh, to amplify it. And then shop attainment. How do you engage you know, using interactives, uh, fun activities, creative content to entertain, entertain consumers, to bring them back on and to increase viewers? So these, these are some areas of what live streaming can achieve, right? It is a new marketing and promotion channel that will help drive traffic to your store or to your website if you're on a brand.com. Um, increasingly, that's very popular now for brands to be building their own website. Um, I want to just quickly say here that that is actually a very effective strategy because you own the data. Technically, if you're working on a free platform like um, Facebook Live, um, yes, you have your followers, it is your own page, but you know, the, the amount of data um, that is available is still limited compared to if you're running it on your own, uh, you know, brand.com uh, e-commerce store or web page, right? Uh, it will reach a wider audience. Uh, it will drive traffic to increase conversions on your e-commerce platform, uh, be it with uh, your, let's say, your Shopee, Live, uh, Shopee store or your Lazada store or your Q10, etc., or Zalora. Um, it can also help to drive traffic to your physical store. So this is what we call the new retail approach of doing it. So don't see live streaming as a pure online engagement. Uh, it can be effectively used to link online and offline, which is what we in China call new retail. So uh, you can bring your events and pop-ups online to reach wider audience we talked about. Um, and it can be a national level, it could be an individual store, it could be a mall level too, if you happen to have you know, uh, outlets in shopping malls. So, very quickly here, um, I want to run through this uh, point about um, oh, excuse me, e-commerce live streaming versus new to retail live streaming. So what, what is new retail live streaming? New retail live streaming is really about uh, where you have both an online platform and a physical brick and mortar store, right? Which is actually very common in Singapore uh, because of our geography and size and also a lot of us as consumers here. Uh, we're very used to just going down to a neighborhood store or a neighborhood mall to buy things. Right, um, so there's opportunity for actually brick and mortar retailers and shopping malls to apply what we call an online plus offline audience engagement method. Right, so you're actually driving traffic both ways. Right, uh, you engage them online to drive them to your online platforms and also to your offline platforms uh, in the stores. Uh, you can use the digital platform to engage a wider audience. Right, um, and then at the same time deciding where you want to drive them to. So live streaming obviously helps to build the brand story, right? So for those who are very uh, equally interested in building a long-term brand, uh, establishing your product positioning, increasing consumer engagement, right? So that's why we came out with this cloud shop where we bring uh, physical retail elements into live streaming because all of us, right, I'm very sure, do both. We use online, we also use offline in, in terms of retail and purchase. So I think that live streaming doesn't have to be either or. 
Um, live streaming is not just for big brands, all right? Um, live streaming is equally accessible to you know, SME brands and retailers. In fact, a lot of our engagements of Singapore is you know, primarily with the SME brands. Um, so I think a lot of SME brands have shown us that you know, they're very willing to explore new channels. Um, you know, it is a very challenging and competitive market, especially with the COVID situation. Um, and why is it not just for big brands? Because small brands or SME brands have content too, and you can be creative. So content-driven creative approach is not restricted to big brands, right? Um, start small, start simple, build a following, and really go back to the marketing fundamentals. Uh, you, you probably hear me say this a lot, right? Live streaming is not a miracle pill. Um, you have to go back to your fundamentals, right? And I, I mentioned earlier, don't be overly fixated with viewership. Uh, the favorite example I, I have is that I, I do know of um, a, a small SME merchant that does live streaming for uh, ornamental fish. All right. Um, and these are very expensive fishes, you know, ornamental fish. You know, it could be like, you know, a few hundred, a few thousand uh, for one of these, you know, fish. And each of time his viewership is only, you know, 50, 60 people. Uh, but he sells, he could easily sell tens of thousands on the street. So, of course, that's because his products are high value. But the point I'm trying to make is that don't just be concerned about viewership numbers because if you're talking to the wrong audience, um, reaching out to the wrong people, it doesn't matter whether you have a very high audience or viewership. Right? What we want now is effectiveness too and conversions. Okay, so is it anything goes uh, with live streaming? Uh, so, you know, Actually, you can say that anything goes with live streaming. It's really about developing a content marketing strategy, right? It's really integrating your sales and marketing plan uh, as a whole and not seeing live streaming just as a standalone, you know, individual uh, channel, right? So your objectives and expectations are very important. You have to be realistic and you have a long-term plan because live streaming is right and still at the infancy stage in Singapore. So I've heard so many merchants say, oh, I tried it once, um, I didn't get any sales, right? Uh, I'll be upfront with everybody, right? If you're looking at immediate sales, it's not impossible, but it is not realistic for a lot of brands because you have to think about what kind of marketing you're doing. Uh, is your content right? What about your bundling, your pricing strategy? Uh, so a lot of considerations to go in for live streaming to be really successful. Uh, and over the past three years of real frontline experience in China and also last year in Singapore, um, we actually take a very, you know, um, you know, strategic approach to this. And it is something that we feel has to start somewhere and then engage over a mid to long term. So live streaming is a medium, it's a tool, and it's really about how you apply it. So really anything goes, right? Uh, in China, you know, it might be gimmick, but people sell cars, sell property. Uh, one funny incident, you know, we are so a rocket, you know, a literally like, you know, a, a, a real rocket for a you know, satellite launch on live streaming. Now, some of it you might say is gimmicky, but you know there's audience and it is a real platform uh, that allows you to share your multiple USPs, right? Product launches, etc. So the rule of thumb is the more content and the more story you have, the more live streaming is applicable to you. So these are the key strategies that will make live streaming work, right? Just to, to, to start summing up, you know, as we enter in the QA, you need a strategy, right, for your content marketing and sales. You need to develop a creative content, uh, be it in house or with an agency, right? Um, you can't run away. You need to execute. You need to produce it. You need studios. You need visual merchandising. You need a host. Now, at this point, I want to say, right, a great celebrity and influencer with a lot of followers might not be a good live streamer. That's extremely important. So that's why we bring out the concept of brand host. So the brand host is someone that plays a very functional and important role to keep your regular live streaming. Um, also, from a cost point of view, imagine asking a celebrity to do three hours, four hours of live streaming. The cost would be phenomenal, right? So the host focuses on the functional part, and the influencer focuses on the marketing part, right? And once again, you need to transact fulfillment. So you do need to have your full retail experience, be it online or offline. So it makes it you know, easy for the user to buy. Um, your KPIs, expectations, how you track viewership, you track engagement, you track conversions. Yeah, and finally, the best content available is useless if you don't market it and you don't distribute it, you know, on omni channels and get an integrated marketing effort to drive eyeballs to your live stream. 
Right. So, um, so once again, this is something I want to, you know, focus on marketing and promotion, right? Get your plan right. You know, look at how you're going to drive content both before the stream and also after the stream to long tail it. Yeah. So we've been doing things like, you know, a lot of uh, video marketing after the streams. So there are a lot of strategies that can be applied, all right, um, to make your live streaming efforts effective and with increasing the ROI of it. So I think some some key advice to everyone, right? So once again, live streaming is not a miracle cure or magic pill, all right? Uh, go back to the fundamentals of marketing and uh, that has served you in a well, right? Be realistic, right? Set realistic and achievable expectations and targets along the way. Build follower base like any other social media. So you have to do this on a regular basis. Uh, have a mid to long term strategy. Okay. And as we wrap up, right, for e commerce to really work in Singapore, now in China, there's already a very established ecosystem. So anyone of you looking to go to China and do live streaming, um, that's the good news. You have a, a very established you know, ecosystem with all kinds of players, resources, etc. Of course, the downside is extremely competitive, and any new player will have to deal with you know, uh, that zero base start or cold start, so to speak. So that's the challenging part. Now in Singapore, um, you know, it's an open market for everybody, right? You know, it's still ground zero. No one's you know the market leader. But the problem is that we need to build an ecosystem and all of us are part of the ecosystem. So we're actually building now in Singapore a live streaming hub. All right, uh, it's a project that will hopefully launch in the next uh, few months that involves everything from studio equipment set up to working with marketplaces and platforms and shopping malls, getting uh, associations and government involved, working with uh, e-commerce enablers, providing warehousing, fulfillment, logistics, both for SME, small players and also for the brands um, we will de help develop ip and program content obviously working with you guys the retailers and the brands uh, providing live streaming solutions and services and working with all the various media outlets we are already working very closely with media corp sph to provide integrated media uh, marketing platforms to and, you know increase the eyeballs and drive effectiveness and roi for live streaming so finally um, in shop attainment, right? Remember, it's the shopping that comes first. So don't be too carried away with entertainment because ultimately we're talking about e commerce live streaming. Um, and uh, that's where we get the ROI eventually and also the conversions. Okay, so we come into the, um, the QA um, session. Um, so I'm gonna, I've not been looking at the chat groups now. So maybe I will stop the, the, the sharing for the moment. Uh, Thank you, Colin. Uh, it's been a very insightful uh, presentation in a very short span of like some 45 minutes. Um, there's a tab, uh, Q&A tab um, next to chat and post. And an anonymous uh, participant uh, posed a question, should we write the wave or look out for the next trend? Um, okay. I think that um, I feel that live streaming is going to be a very important uh, medium and channel, not just on the commerce front, but also in terms of, uh, as mentioned, the audience engagement um, and you know fan following, you know build up. So I don't think there's this thing about the wave or not. I think it's about any brand who is looking to grow uh, into the future uh, to use it as a tool. And with any tool, right, including me using Hopin for the first time, right, you have to try it out, you have to learn it as a trial. Um, so I would say, you know, it, it's something that brands will start engaging in, engaging with, right? Whether it's on a, just a small scale to test it, to experience it. And for those that have started already, is to keep going and, and you know, uh, and persevering. Because from our China experience, right, it does take a bit of time. Um, We've already seen how the ecosystem in terms of the live streaming content volume increasing. I think the next step now is the consumers are going to look at, hey, um, how do I engage better? What is it in for me as a consumer? Is it the discounts? Is it the offer? Is it the entertainment? So I think it's up to us as the B part of it, all right, to actually show the C, the consumers, you know, what we're offering on this platform to make it worth their while to spend more time on it to engage more with live streaming. 
So um, waves will come and go. Yeah, uh, there, there will always be peak, uh, um, I would say, you know, certain uh, uh, spikes in activity. Um, but I think that those that are successful in China are those that kept at it constantly with their own strategy and their own sort of approach. Yeah, yeah thanks, um, Colin. Uh, but we are able to see the Q&A tab. Um, oh, there are two um, sorry about that. Yeah, let me click into that. Yeah, so let's right. get new to this. Okay, uh, Leonard is asking about, are there any types of brands that offer a certain type of product services that you feel will work? Okay, um, I think that right now in our experience, both in China and Singapore, right, um, there are two big categories of products. One would be what we call the more mass product that you can go on impulse buying. So a good example would type your, your snacks, for example, uh, or even your you know, small gadgets, right, where you know, it's easier for people to say, hey, wow, this looks interesting. That looks fun. That looks uh, yummy, right? Uh, it's not very expensive. Wow, good discounts. I'm going to buy. So it's almost impulse buying, right? So I think those are certain types of products and, and brands that you can go in with that. Now, the other type would be where you have a lot of story to tell, where your brands have a lot of USP that requires demonstration, um, that requires, you know, uh, actually you know explanation right so i think for those brands right actually live streaming is a perfect platform because through a video uh, uh, sort of medium you can better engage better show okay and because there's the chat function you can actually take questions uh, real time and address you know the consumer sort of uh, you know problems or issues uh, specifically so i think there is that that two-way you know um, you know uh, approach to that so that's another sort of category right um then in terms of um services i think even from our own example right you know you can see things like your banks financial institutions doing that uh, education i think is a very very interesting one right so i think these are a few that we've spotted you know um, electrical appliances are doing very well um on live streaming too uh, then makeup another big category um as you saw in, in, the, in some of the statistics that we've shown um fashion now fashion is a tricky one because unless you know your size okay um and there's a great return policy um fashion is is you know in certain cases not as successful if it's a new brand because you're not familiar with cutting and the sizing but if it's a regular brand that you use and it's a special offer okay oh, no. uh, very effective yeah okay uh is there an optimal timing uh, we have noticed, interesting enough, right? Um, the traditional optimal timing is in the evening, let's say from eight o'clock onwards to ten. That we will peak. But we also realize that if you're targeting a different demographic, the afternoon streams are actually quite popular too. Uh, if you're going for a slightly older crowd, um, because in Singapore, right, it's not just the young that are watching live stream. Uh, my mother watches live stream, right? Um, you know, and I think that the older crowd, right, because of their you know, their sort of activity hours, the afternoon time is a good option, right? Uh, I have a question here that says about sources. Um, I think with sources, right, uh, I'm not sure what kind of sources we're talking about here, but with sources, uh, you can, like, source, source, then maybe you have to do it with a cooking program, right? Now, I know for source sources, right, there's actually a lot of um, knowledge behind it, right? Your production process, the quality of beans, um, you know, your brand, right, your production method, because I think consumers are all concerned about what they put into their body, what they eat. So I think good opportunity to talk about, uh, not sure what brand you are, but uh, good to talk about your heritage, if you have one, your production, your quality uh, ingredients, and also, you know, do the cooking thing, right? Engage, um, you know, uh, the whole cooking process, right? Um, I've just been reminded we're ending soon. So one last question here. Does streaming on multiple platforms uh, help in terms of ROI? The answer is yes. Uh, definitely try multiple platforms because uh, even for the marketplace, as big as they are here with Shopee's and Lazada's and Q10's and whatnot, right? Uh, you're still restricted to their users, number one. Uh, and number two, you're restricted to being a brand um, online. So actually, it is better if you go on multiple uh, channels, which is actually possible from a technical point of view. Um, it's more restrictions that are put in place by the 
e-commerce marketplace that may prevent you from going on their competitors platform at the same time right so the word omni-channel comes into play here it's great if you go into multiple uh, channels but also bear in mind right you have to manage these channels properly the q a the chat engagements what kind of uh, you know uh, perks are you giving on each channel now bear in mind facebook and instagram great because it's a social media platform but the downside is that they're not set up as a uh, e-commerce uh, platform i know facebook store is launched but up to now you will see that facebook does not offer uh, the full integrated uh, e-commerce experience i know people try with the pay now pay la and whatsapp pms etc so they're trying to overcome it so i think all the platforms now have their pros and cons you know strong in one end maybe weak in others so that's why i think the multiple channel uh, engagement is important uh can maybe I, I think we should wrap up because we've got two minutes to that's right yeah over to Kristen. <laughs> okay thank you very much thank you very much to Ken and Colleen for the very insightful morning sharing. 